Okie dokie. Okie dokie, everyone. Can I start off by saying either a good morning or good afternoon, or even a good evening, depending on where you are around the world. And welcome and thank you for joining me tonight on tonight's latest episode of How I Got to Understand Trading Series for Stratton Markets. Now, tonight's episode is called How I Came to Understand the Santa Rally and Why Fundamentals Matter. Written by yourself, of course, which is James Truscothic, and I'm the Chief Trading Educator here at Stratton Markets. Now, before we get on tonight's agenda and a little bit about myself, obviously, we are talking about CFD and online trading. And like with every type of investment, it does indeed carry a great deal of risk. So I do suggest you do your own research and your own due diligence and know the risks at hand before entering any trade. With that out the way, this slightly hairy, wrinkly, podgy looking in this picture, to be honest, slightly podgy looking, is myself. Like I said, my name is James Triscothic, and I'm the Chief Trading Educator here at Stratton Markets. I have over 20 years experience in the financial service industry. Started out in mortgages, then moved into pensions, and then, of course, I moved into alternative investments and then portfolio management before online trading, etc. I traded myself through Dubai Gold and Commodity Exchange, and I ran a trading floor at the Philippines Stock Exchange. I am indeed a published writer, and I've been published in several leading industry publications, including the likes of the Financial Times Advisor, Market Watch, which is the Wall Street Journal, and several newspapers and magazines. I'm an avid market commentator. I'm incredibly passionate about this market, and I do like to share my opinions every now and then, because obviously I've traded before. And I'm a well-known public speaker, and I've spoken at several industry events around the world, including the likes of Dubai, Singapore, Kuwait, Qatar, Jordan, uh, Berlin, London, obviously, Joburg, Pretoria, Cape Town, in South Africa, Cairo, just to name just a few. Now... Tonight's agenda, what I would talk about, first of all, is I'll do a, that's a very brief uh, discussion on uh, what is the Santa Rally, followed by the bulk of tonight's presentation, which is about fundamental analysis, what it is and why it matters and how it can affect the market, etc. Then I'll discuss about the theory behind fundamental analysis, followed by economic indicators why economic indicators matter and how they can affect the market, politics, disasters, and global conflict, supply and demand principles, then how to prepare for your trading day, and then up and coming events for next year, because this is the final webinar for 2018. And then I'll do my usual question and answer session. So what is the Santa Rally? The so-called, I'll put myself on camera for this so you can see me. Hello. Right. Here I am. So anyway, the so-called Santa Rally is a type of calendar effect, which occurs at the end of December, hence called the Santa Claus Rally. And it happens in December during the final weeks of trading. Now, this phenomenon sees stock prices suddenly rise during this period. Now, on average, when this so-called rally occurs, because it doesn't always occur, but when it does occur, on average, uh, they have seen like a 1.3% rise in stock prices. And this has been recorded over the last sort of five trading sessions, the last five trading days of December, and they've been recording this incident since 1950. And believe it or not, I wasn't born in 1950, so I'm not that old. The cause of the rally has been uh, sort of put down to, to increase activity by investors, 
you know, trying to get the year out, they get their bonuses. So they put their money into like certain assets straight away, you know. Um, and at the same time, sort of fund managers sort of window dressing their holdings, you know, making it look attractive for future investors in the new year. You know, they've even dressed their assets and what they got their positions in. Now, when the Santa Claus rally fails to materialize and fails to happen, many people believe this sort of points to a potential poor economic performance for the new year to come. So when it doesn't happen, and they, people don't see it, people then start to think, right, the new year is not looking too good. So we might face more struggle and strife, so to speak, in the coming year ahead of us. So that's what the Santa Rally is. So let's talk about the bulk of tonight's presentation, which is, of course is fundamental analysis. So what is fundamental analysis? Fundamental analysis is the study of microeconomic effects that can affect economic stocks, forex, commodities, let's see my coffee because I'm thirsty, and companies. Fundamental analysis also, include, it also includes global events, politics, and conflict. Traders use fundamental analysis to try and forecast potential future price movements. Basically, in a nutshell, they're looking for the intrinsic value. Now, by studying economic conditions, industry conditions, supply and demand factors, and following economic indicators, which we'll discuss in a minute, an investor can look at an asset's current price and establish if it's undervalued or overvalued. So what are economic indicators? Economic indicators are statistics or calculations that can point or indicate where the economy is heading. Now there's sort of three types of economic indicators. There's a leading, coincident, and lagging indicators. Now, leading indicators are, for example, consumable durables, are monitored to try and predict future directions of an economy. Coincident indicators, things like GDP, employment data, are seen as an, uh, as an outcome of economic activities, which makes sense. If your economy is growing, then obviously more jobs and things like that. Lagging indicators include CPI, inflation, unemployment, and they occur after an economic event, so a negative event, potentially. Now, economic indicators, and we'll go through a couple tonight, only a couple, but these include uh, the following. Consumer price index, employment figures, retail sales, industrial production, producer price index, gross domestic product, and interest rate decisions. Now, the question is, you need to ask yourself, is what makes one currency stronger than the other? Because at the end of the day, let's face it, they're both made out of the same sort of material. Um, notes are made out of both the same amount of paper. They're not made out like magic silver, are they? Um, and then coins are still made out of pretty much the same metal. But really, what makes one note worth more than another note? And the answer is pretty, pretty simple. The answer is a strong economy equals a stronger currency. So let's go through some of these events and some of these indicators, which the market looks to, to try and predict where our economy might go to, which can then obviously affect the strength of that currency. So don't forget, these indicators are to look for how strong an economy is and how that can affect the price of a currency. So a weaker economy, weaker currency, stronger economy, stronger currency. Sounds simple, but yeah, in theory, that's the theory. So let's look at some key indicators which can lead to a health of an economy. 
Now, one up is the consumer price index. Now, this is released monthly. It is a percentage. And it measures the change in price of a basket of goods and services. Let's see what am I doing? It is a key indicator, a key indicator to measure inflation. The higher the percentage, the higher the chances of a central bank raising interest rates to combat it. Why is that, James? Well, I explain to you. If inflation is high, okay, so you have high inflation, one of the tools that a central bank can fight it to make things cheaper for people is to increase the value of that currency. And I'll give you a prime example of this. Now, as we all know, and as you can tell, I am a Brit. Don't hold that against me. Prime example of this, what happened in the UK. Now, when the UK did the Brexit vote back in June 2016, the British pound plummeted against the majors, plummeted against the dollar, and also plummeted against the euro. Now, the UK is a island. So a lot of the goods we have come in from abroad. It comes in from the EU, comes in from Europe, United States, etc. So when our currency was weaker, or when the British pound was weaker, made it more expensive for our everyday person, Joe Bloggs, to buy things. So it cost more. And that increased inflation. So what the Bank of England did to try and combat this is they started to raise interest rates to make the sterling stronger so it was cheaper to buy things. So basically, in other words, the reason why the market looks for this is that if there's a high inflation, then they double guess that the central bank may raise interest rates, which then may, may strengthen the currency. So this is why they pay attention to consumer price index. Obviously, the negative side of that, if it's lower, then the chances of the central bank actually doing anything is unlikely. And so that can potentially weaken the currency. Retail sales. Now, let's face it, we live in a modern day world and our modern day economy is all based on about how much we spend our money how much rubbish we practically buy, how many new iPhones we're buying, how many, all right, just to be buy, um, balanced, Samsung Galaxy phones we're buying, how many, you know, Playstations, new cars, things like this. If we're spending our money, it means we're optimistic, it means there's more money in the system, paying for salaries, paying for manufacturing, etc. So if retail sales are on the way up, it shows that the economy is indeed growing and is strong and should have a positive impact on the currency. Now, it's released monthly, is a percentage. And like I say, it measures the sale of goods from the retail sector. And like I say, if there's growth, positive. If there's negative, not so good for the currency. Then you have gross domestic product. Now, gross domestic product is released monthly. It is indeed a percentage. And this measures the overall health of a country's economy. Now, like we've done with all the other ones, the higher percentage so shows the strength of that country's economy, which could lead to potentially a stronger currency, a negative, the opposite effect. The other one I want to talk, talk about is the non-farm payroll. Now, the non-farm payroll is US job data. And those who are currency traders know this can potentially be extremely volatile. And it can affect the US dollar a lot. And bear in mind, the US dollar is the world's base currency, all the majors are pretty much traded against it. Now, it's released on a monthly basis. And it's a thousand number. So it measures the amount of new jobs created the previous month and usually it's released on the first friday of a new month and like i say it measures the number of new jobs created the previous month not not including farm workers or actually the military as well and that's why it's called very imaginative non-farm payroll 
The higher than expected could lead to a stronger USD. A lower number can lead to a weaker USD against the majors. Now, as I've already said at the beginning, the NFB can cause extreme volatility. So depending on your attitude to risk, you may or may not want to trade this event. Interest rate decisions. And this is really a key, one of the key ones. A lot of this data really leads up to this. Because if you've got a strong economy, they raise interest rates. If you've got a low or negative economy, they reduce them. Now, let's go a bit more detail about this. It is released around about eight times a year. It is indeed a percentage. And there's two words you need to work, look out for and listen to when they're talking about this. One is tightening. Tightening is when inflation is high and the economy is growing. If that happens, the central bank in question increases interest rates to encourage, guess what, us to save and to lower inflation. When things are not so good, inflation is low and the economy is, say, sluggish, the central bank in question, typo, ignore that, the type, um, the central bank in question will lower interest rates. And why do they do this? Because if it's sluggish, guess what? They need us to kickstart it. They need us to borrow money. They need us to spend our money. And by doing that, they lower interest rates. We can borrow more, buy new cars, new phones, or businesses can inject, and they do that. So loosening, not so good. Tightening, pretty good for the currency in question. There's other things to uh, keep an eye on as well. Other things such as press conferences and minutes. Now, <coughs> excuse me, the market monitors press conferences and minutes released by the central bank to try and read into what they may do in the future, i.e. will they raise rates or lower interest rates in the future. Now, if the speaker is hawkish, the currency could get stronger. If the speaker is dovish, the currency could get weaker. That sounds really pretty, James. But what actually does that mean? Now, hawkish means that the guy doing the, or the individual doing the press conference, it could be a lady, of course, um, doing the press conference is aggressive in his speech. He's optimistic about 